Hi guys and welcome to a new video on Sonal's Life. Am I gonna bore you with the oh sorry it's been a few weeks since the video? No, I am gonna say it's Christmas so all my Christmas things are out and well by the title as always you can tell what I am gonna be talking about. For the past few weeks New Japan have had once again their joint best of super junior and world tag league tournament. So in the, each of these tournaments we had the best junior heavyweight and the best heavyweight tag teams fighting all for an opportunity to challenge the champions El Desperado and Dangerous Tekkers Taichi and Zack Sabre Jr. at Wrestle Kingdom for their titles. So as we've just had the final I thought let's have a whistle stop tour of everything that's happened through this tournament. So I'm going to look at some of the best matches, the storylines, my MVPs and of course the final night. So let's get going. Now going into this tournament I had my preconceptions and these are ones that I've had ever since I started watching New Japan and it always is the fact that I am going to enjoy Best of Super Junior more than World Tag League and nothing against any of the tag teams involved that was the case again this year. Maybe it's because one of the issues New Japan has is the lack of investment in tag teams. Yes, it has got a lot better over the past few months with the likes of Chaos and obviously G.O.D. challenging for Dangerous Tech as his title, a team that has really brought a new bit of life to the division. But I still found myself, while watching these matches, finding a list of possible Match of the Year candidates for Best of Super Junior, but hardly any for World Tag League. So I thought, let's start with World Tag League because like I said, it was an amazing tournament. So going into this tournament, we had some huge teams. So we had your usual, Dangerous Techers, G.O.D., Yoshihashi Goto. We had some new teams, so Toa Hanari, The Great Okan. Some mixed tag teams, so Suzuki, Takamichi Noku, Yuji Nagata, Tiger Mask. And we had some very random pairings, like Hiroshi Tanahashi and Toriyano, which is probably one of my favourite teams of the entire tournament. And we did have some amazing matches. So the first night of Tag League action, we had Suzuki Goon versus Suzuki Goon. Now this was not just a big thing because it was Taka's first match after a two year hiatus from the company, but because of the impact on the guys in the match. So Suzuki is this head honcho and Taichi's always had this bit of saltiness. But more importantly than that, Zack was going against his former mentor, his former hype man in Taka Michinoku. And yes, Taka got beat to the pulp, but throughout this entire tournament, Suzuki hasn't cared that they literally didn't get a single win. For him, it was about building Taka up, and hopefully now he's back, we can have him in some more tag matches, we can have him in junior matches, and maybe Zack gets his hype man back. Talking about dangerous Tekkers, they also had a very epic match against, like I said before, one of my favourite teams, Hiroshi Tanahashi and Yano. You know what the relationship is like between Yano and Zack Sabre Jr. and this was just as chaotic. The two are honestly the weirdest match but they worked so well. They had matching jackets, their hair was similar. The match was great. We had a mix of styles, so Zack's submission, Yano's craziness, Tanahashi's sort of high flying and Tai Chi's strength. The best part though was when obviously they went out, Yano got his tape, wrapped him all up. Don't worry, it's fine. Kanemaru's to the rescue came back, untaped untai them, and then Zack and Taichi managed to tape Yano and Tanahashi together to get the win. Like I said, there were some great matches throughout. Dangerous Techers, G.O.D. and Goto and Yoshihashi and Naito and Sonata, so those four teams, consistently put on amazing matches night after night. Whether it was against some of the top guys like each other and the Empire. But then they also had great matches against guys who we didn't expect to get that many points. So obviously the likes of Suzuki Goon, Yuji Nagata Tiger Mask, Tenkoji were back in it this year. But it was phenomenal. And as we get to the final, we'll notice this. The one blunderous team was Evil and Yujiro. So yeah, it wasn't my favourite part of this tour. Like I said, best Super Junior was but still amazing and they are slowly building up this tag team division from something that was very stale, something that I actually enjoy watching. So, well done tag teams, you did well. Obviously we went up to the Super Junior Tournament and it's a common knowledge that the reason I really got into New Japan was the Junior Division. And once again, New Japan showed why, and Doki said it, I love Doki, New Japan has probably the best Junior Division in the world. They have so much diverse talent. You had sort of starting guys, so Doki, Wato, 
your middle card guys, Yo, Show, Phantasmo, and then your high end guys, Champion, Desperado, Hiromu, people like that, Robbie Eagles, all of them showcasing just how much they want the division to thrive. We had some amazing storylines going through. So it'll lead into the finals, but Yo basically started by losing every single match. He even lost to like Hiromu in maybe three minutes. Then managed to get a winning streak seven in a row, I think, which is probably, I think, a record breaking to get to the final. We had the story of El Fantasma in his boot. So basically he was struggling to pick up any wins, suddenly realized his boot could be used in a different way and managed to tap people out without even really putting a submission on him. And then obviously we got your big guys. So Despy had a very up and down tournament. Obviously he didn't win, sad me, but his sort of, need to prove that he is a good champion that he can do it and through all of these we had some amazing matches i am going to do another article on wrestle talk so make sure you follow them if you randomly don't where i'm actually going to tell you all of my favorite matches but here are just a few and i had to write them down so we had kanemaru versus el fantasmo amazing not the longest but kanemaru proved that el fantasmo could be outsmarted and obviously Kanemaru was one of my MVPs of the entire tournament, but I'll talk about that later. We had Ishimori versus Desperado, two guys who have a very long history. Yo versus Master Wato. A lot of people have had their eyes open to Wato in this tournament. He has become a much safer worker, showing off a much more varied offense. And yeah, it was phenomenal. Um, Hiromu versus Doki. Doki, another guy who this year has come on leaps and bounds. And his match against Hiromu, people expected it to be over within like five minutes. It was a solid 20 minute match full of amazing action. Mm. I feel like I've just written everything down. Like it's all of the matches. But again, you know how much I like interfaction matches. So if you've got time, check out Ishimori versus ELP. Amazing because ELP won. But the reason that he won was because of Ishimori's reluctance to cheat. And then Desperado versus Kanemaru. You know what, I always say, oh, chaos when they wrestle each other are amazing. Suzuki Gun are just like vicious as hell. And it was an amazing match between those two. I really thought, especially at the start, that Kanemaru was gonna win. Like, or at least get to the final of the tournament because he was picking up win after win. But unfortunately he didn't. But he was definitely one of my MVPs. So I think my MVPs of the tournament, Yo, Kanemaru, Desperado, Hiromu, and Master Wato, and Taguchi, because Taguchi's just Taguchi and I love him. But like I said, both tournaments had were special in their own way, had their standout matches. And it all led to the final on the 15th of December, and it was an amazing show. So I took the day off, because I was like, I have time to spare. What better than using one of those days off to watch it live? And it was amazing. So the show itself, we obviously started with some undercard matches, that's gonna help build up to Wrestle Kingdom, which is literally not even a month away. We saw the return of Okada, Shingo, Jeff Cobb, Tanahashi challenged Kenta for the US title and Kenta agreed. The big news that Shibata came out to the ring before the halftime and basically said, I am coming back on January the 4th at Wrestle Kingdom, nothing else. But that was enough to make the crowd go wild. And it was a big lead up to the main two events. And it was sort of like a co-main event. And the first one was for the World Tag League Championships or the World Tag League Trophies. And it was, surprisingly, Yoshihashi and Goto, who, like I said, MVPs of the tournament, have been working amazingly together ever since they had their never six-man reign with Ishii versus, versus Evil and Yujiro. So as expected, it's, it was a really good match in the sense of like, Goto and Yoshihashi are amazing wrestlers. They were trying to fight through everything that Evil and Yujiro were giving, which obviously involved a lot of dick togo and a lot of shenanigans with a stick, taking the turnbuckle off. And it got to a point where I think they hit their, their joint finisher and Gato, dick togo pulled the referee out, bless him, my Yasami, and I was like, right, well, one, they've not banned Dick Togo from the ringside. That's their own fault. And two, doesn't that mean that Yoshihashi and Goto are losing? Wrong! Because when all hope was lost and I was ready to cry into a pillow, Tomohiro Ishii finally made his return to Japan after his 
semi-excursion in America and basically beat the shit out of Dick Togo, beat the shit out of Yuzhu and beat the shit out of Evil so that Yoshihashi and Goto could hit one of their new finishes and I'm not sure of the name at this moment in time but spectacularly won the Tag League trophies and honestly I couldn't be happier. This year, especially Yoshihashi has proven all the doubt was wrong and yeah I'm just happy that it wasn't Evil and Yuzhu. However, as good as that match was, the main event between Hiromu and Yo might be my match of the year, which is a big thing for me to say. Basically going into this, you know what I told you before, Yo was losing and everyone was like, why is this guy in it? Why is he even still a wrestler? After everything that happened with Sho. But he came back on top, beating literally seven in a row to get to the final. Same with Hiromu, who came back with a vengeance after coming back from his injury and had so much to prove. And within this match, there was so much. Started off with a feeling out process, guys. were very basic in their wrestling and sort of stayed to the mat. Quickly zoomed up again, like quick pins. They were running across the ring. Like after the 15 minute match, like they had a surge of adrenaline. And I don't want to tell you too much about the match because you should definitely go and watch it. But it felt like each time Hiromu was giving his best. Yo, for the first time, had this new desire and passion to say, Right, things have been going badly for me. Like I was losing, I was not in a great place, but I am where I'm meant to be in the main event of a New Japan big show. Now, talking about show, it's a nice lead up. Obviously being Bullet Club, there could not be some shenanigans. So show decided to come up halfway through while the two were on the outside wrestling. Amazingly, by the way. And show came out, decided to drop Yo on his head, said to Hiromu, you take it. Hiromu was wanted to win clean. He didn't want any of this. So he basically was having a go at Sho. Sho hit him with his cross arrow and the two were down and he went a bit crazy and was like, let's call this match off. Luckily, finally, Yoshihashi and Goto and Naito and, S Naito and Shingo came out to help their guys. Got rid of Sho, made sure there was no shenanigans and cheered on their guys to an amazing, to carry on an amazing match. And within the last seven minutes, I can tell you, my heart has never beat so much. They were hitting finishes, so Hiromu hit his time bomb, Yo kicked out. Yo was doing these bridges where it was literally like a nanosecond Hiromu kicked out. And you know what? For a second, I was like, Yo's winning this. Like, I'm going to throw everything out. Yo is finally going to do it. In the end, after a match that went 38 minutes, which is the longest Best of Super Junior final match ever, Hiromu hit the time bomb too to get the win. And honestly, like, as sad as I am for Yo, I am over the move Hiromu, and I think it wasn't Yo's time. After such a shit few years, even as Rapongi 3K, they were never the best. This is like Yo cementing that, yes, he belonged in the main event, he can carry on this streak. And when the time comes that he wins the IWGP Junior Championship, and he will, it will be very deserving. And also, Hiromu, he has done so much for this division. And he deserved the moment to shine. And it means that we are going to get Desperado versus Hiromu at the Tokyo Dome. And luckily, hopefully Hiromu shouldn't be jinxed because the trophy didn't break. Mainly because he didn't let Naito hold it. So yeah, that is a look at the Best of Super Junior and World Tag League Tour. Like I said, I didn't want to give you too much information. You can read about that from other people. Go and watch the matches. But I just want to say, like, people have complained about lineups and the tournaments in the past few years because of the pandemic. But they have showcased just how strong they are and that they don't need um, talent from out elsewhere to prove how good they can wrestle. And now we are finally officially on the road to Tokyo Dome. So we're going to have a bit of a break and literally four days before Christmas, Merry Christmas, we're going to have the Road to Tokyo shows where we're going to know all about everything that is going to happen on January 4th and 5th of Wrestle Kingdom. And remember we have that January 8th show with Noah. So basically we are set for the next few weeks. Now, obviously that was my video. Let me know what you thought. What was your favorite match of the tournament? Who were your MVPs? Were you like me? Was Best of Super Junior more your thing? Let me know in the comments. Let me know on my social media. So at wrestling underscore chat on Twitter and at Sonos Life 96 on Instagram. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because I promise you there will be a lot more content coming up, especially as the end of the year comes and Wrestle Kingdom comes on the way. And yeah, hopefully I'll go see you guys soon. Bye!